In this video, I'll teach you how you can create this kind of an amazing dark forest scene inside of Unreal Engine 5.5.4. Trust me, this will be an amazing tutorial. Don't skip the video. Let's get started. All right, guys, uh, this is the scene which I have created and this is a very basic scene. But the main plus point of this scene is all about the lighting and the environment creation. All right, then let's go. So first thing first, we are going to reset the scene. So go to file new level and I'm going to create an empty level. Press create and don't save. So here I am. Just go back to your content folder because I'm going to create a new folder. So right click new folder and name it to tutorial. And inside of this folder, I'm going to create my each and every steps. So first I'm going to import the house model, which I'm going to use in the scene. So click import and select the GLV file and just press open. And once you open, simply type combine. And once you find this checkbox, simply turn this on and press import. This will combine all your static meshes into one single mesh. Now, once you click the static mesh, you can find out your static mesh right over here. All right, now let's create the lighting first. So click here and go to lights and we are going to use HDRI backdrop. Simply select this. So we have something like this. Now need to change the HDRI, simply browse it. I am going to use this overcast HDRI. So simply drag and drop into here and it will automatically apply it over here. Now you can simply expand this area, select the skylight and you need to import the same HDRI in the source type. Simply change it to SLL specific cube map and drag and drop the same HDRI right over here. Now go to this geometry. If you notice the static mesh geometry is right now in a dome shape. So what do you need to do? Simply select and type SKY sky and going down, you can find two options sky sphere and SM sky sphere. So simply select the static mesh SM sky sphere. So now you have a big globe in front of you. Now go to this HDRI backdrop and increase the size of it to 5000. So now you have a pretty big, large amount of a sky. Now simply over here, you can find this intensity. Just make it to 0.2. So you have something like this. You can also control the intensity from post process volume. So just reset it, click here and go to visual effects and you can find this called post process volume. Click here, firstly type infinite bound and you can simply turn this on, close this. Going down, you can find this called exposure. Check this two on and check this two on. Now make it to one by one. So now you have locked the exposure. So if you control the exposure right from here, it will control the both HDRI and the normal one as well. So I'm making it to 0.1 as of now because I'm going to change it again. Also, if you want to change in HDRI backdrop, simply select going here. You can find this 0.1. So make it to just like this. So it will make them more crisp and clear. Now we are going to create the landscape. So click here and press the landscape button and I'm going to import a very basic displacement map so you can find import from file. Just browse here. Now select your height map and press open. So it will come like this only. Now change it to five and you can simply press fit to data or you can simply press import. So here I'm clicking this fit to data and press import. So now you have something displaced ground in front of you. So now you need to find out the exact place where you are going to simulate the entire scene. So go to the selection panel, select the landscape and increase the height a little bit like 10. So now you have more displacement in front of you. So as you can see, we have a lot of displaced area here. So I'm going to select somewhere here for the population of the scene. This looks perfect for my scene. All right. So now after that, we are going to add the ground texture. For the ground texture, I am using the mega scan. So simply click this mega scan and you can find the surface panel. By the way, if you don't know how to use mega scan from Quixel mega scan and also from the fab, please go and comment down below. Also, I have created a dedicated video how to use new fab. Simply go and watch that video. Now you can find this called material instance. Check this on and you can find the material. Select the landscape going down. You can find this landscape material drag and drop into this here and the landscape will automatically apply it with this material. Now, if you find some tiling impact, just double click in it. And here you can find this called tiling offset. Just change it to 0.1 by 0.1. So automatically the tiling issue will fixed. So now going down, you can find out your exact place where you are going to use the house model. All right. So now going here, turn this material instance off, going your tutorial folder and simply use this static mesh, drag and drop to here. Now you are going to increase the size of the house size and increasing the hut shape. So let's change it to 10. 
because we are going to make it little bigger because the ground texture should match with the house bigger it little more like 15 and now this looks perfect now once you're happy with your house positions now let's create on the camera because we are not going to work on unnecessary areas so what do you need to do simply click here you can find this called create cine camera and you can find this cine camera actor simply select just pin this view so that every time it will be in front of you here you can notice what's going on go to this lens settings and just minimum f-stop change it to zero you can find this called crop sections just make it to 2.39 so that it will create a cinematic accept ratio going up you can change the rotation panels and all to get some more cinematic look so i'm just changing it little in this directions and this looks perfect as of now if i'll think i'll change it later all right so now you can focus on this much area and i'm going to create so much foliages everywhere okay so now select the hdri and i'm just going to rotate the hdri a little bit to match with our scene so just rotate the hdri right from here and make sure what kind of light situations are impacting with your scene so this looks pretty good now i am going to import the ground foliages to populate the scene so first of all save it because it can be crash so now go here make sure select the foliages tab now you can find this plus foliages where you need to import the mega scan foliages now simply select the static meshes and here you can simply select the 3d plants so all these are actually foliages from the mega scan simply select all drag and drop into this here so simply drag and drop and you can find all the assets right over here select all and you can find this brush size increase it a little bit more and now you can just populate right over here but the density is too much so change it to 10 now the x scale make it to 0.2 so now if we'll just click to populate you can exactly see the grounds are populate with the foliages so i'm going to first populate the lower ground like lower foliages then i'm going to use the larger foliages so i'm just simply start painting with very less amount of this and now increasing the density to let's say 50 and let's say radius is 25 so now it will populate little bit more if you notice it start populating pretty easily all right so i'm almost covered with the ground part and now i'm going to increase the size of the foliages so what i'll do i'll just make sure the size should be one by 2.5 so now it will create a little larger amount of foliages and now the density should 10 and also i'm going to increase the radius to like 80 like intensity sorry the density and now if i'll click if you notice the foliages are start applying over here so now increase the shape should be little 3.5 to make a little bit more bigger and now it looks really cool so once you're happy with your foliages for the ground let's populate the backgrounds with the trees now i'm going to import the trees where i'm going to use this european beach trees so you can find a lot of trees right over here but don't use everything because it will, it will definitely crash your system so what i'm going to do i'm just selecting few trees like one two and three this is more than enough trust me and drag and drop into this here in the foliages tab now select all these three now here i am going to do it a little bit different way so first of all increase the brush size now going down you can find the height as well so just change it to three and now make sure density should very less like 10 or 5 because the trees can be crash your system so save it first and save all right over here and now just paint only that much area you required so once you click you can see the bunch of trees are here so just press ctrl z in it and decrease the density to one click here now if you notice three trees are combined together so just simply press ctrl z going up you can find this called single instance mode now once you click you can find one single single trees so just populate it first and make sure you have to cover the entire house with the trees but not too much so that the light will not come up so just fill with the trees where you want to fill also fill on this area so that light will cover your scene now once you're happy with your this much area now you can populate the backside as well so simply just paint it randomly so that you can create a depth but don't populate on this areas because this area is not visible by the way if you feel little bit lag you can simply press this unlit option now it will not lag your scene but also you can see the final output right over here this will be very helpful to create or build the scenes all right we are done with our scene now if you notice this scene looks pretty dark but don't worry we are going to fix this so first get back from the selection mode and now we are going to use one foreground element which can create a little bit depth in it 
So to use a foreground element, I have this corridor, just simply drag and drop into this here. And this can create little depth in my scene. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this as a door and the camera will follow through right from the door. So simply rotate this, make sure the camera should inside of this. Now I just push it little down with the ground and this absolutely perfect for now. Now I'm going to jump into the camera view to see what exactly going on. So this is my camera view and I'm going to go right from here. Okay, so this is my view. Now I'm going to use one light over here to illuminate the lighting. So just use the light. So these two lights are giving some light inside of this environment. And uh, yeah, this is perfect for my scene. So this is little wide, not wide, uh, little wide. Okay. So now I'm going to do the first camera animation. So firstly, going to the add level sequence and select my tutorial folder and press save and just simply drag the camera here. So we have 165 frames, but I'm going to do this in 60 FPS so that we have a double frame range. So now select this and go to last. Now, why I'm doing this? Because in post, I'm going to slow-mo this. So now if you are using 60 FPS in slow-mo, you can convert it into 30 FPS and it looks more cinematic. All right, so now I'm just zoom the camera slightly so that it will go from this view and just little top view like this. And that's it. Just simply make it here, select, right click and linear. So now once you play, this is my camera view. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to first using the depth of field so that it can be always in focus. So simply check this on, decrease the focus length to here and change the focus duration like 0.2. So now if we we'll make it to lit, you can exactly see the focus is defocused on this area. And these two lights, as I told you, illuminate the inside of the scene. And this is from the outside. Okay, cool. Now we are going to give this scene a real life in it. How? Let me show you. So first of all, save it. And now press here. You can find this visual effects, exponential height and fog. Click this and change the fog density to 0.8 and the scene will exactly going dark. Now going down, you can find this called volumetric fog. Simply turn this on and the scene will start lighting up a little bit. You can use this scattering distribution a little up. And now the start distance, once you increase, you can see the fog going in depth. Also, you can use this near fit distance, which can control the frontal areas. So if you go back, you can see the fogs are in back. And if you go here, the fogs are increasing and decreasing as well. Then the post process volume, you can going down, you can find this exponential uh, like exposure settings. So change it to 1.5 as well to push the light little up so that you can see everything. Now, if you notice the fogs are pretty high. So what you can do in decrease this scale value little down, also the scattering distributions as well. You can find this fog height fall off. If you increase this fall off, you can simply see the fogs are getting down in the ground. If you decrease, it will be on the top. Also, you can simply select the directional light, press Ctrl L on your keyboard and you can literally check the light directions and also you can increase the intensity of this directional light. So just change it to 10. So now see this looks more dramatic in your scene because you have dense fog. So you need to increase the directional light intensity to fill with our scene. So I'm going to do it a little different. And last, if you find out too much fog in your scene, just simply decrease the scale ratio to 0.5 and it will fix. Also, you can simply check the colors right from here, but I suggest do it in post. It will give you a dramatic changes. Now in the post process volume, let's do some color gradings and all. So first of all, if you view it right from here, this looks just like this. All right. So now going down, you can find out so many options for the color grading. So first thing first, you can find this called temperature. Simply turn this to, and I'm going to decrease the temperature a little bit. So to create a little bit bluish amount, then the global saturations, increase the saturation level so that the green will visible. Then the contrast, I'm going to give little darkish tone. So see, now it start getting cinematic in your scene. Then the gamma, I'm going to decrease it a little more. But in the gain, I'm going to increase to make sure the highlight should up. In the shadows, the contrast should little back so that you can see the environmental fog over here. In the saturation of the shadows should little down as well. Just like this. Cool. Now we are going to type Vignette effect. 
simply turn this on increase this so that the sides looks just like this uh, and i'm going to change the lights once again because i don't like the light directions so just press ctrl l on your keyboard and just change the light directions and you are good to go now if you want to use the fires simply click here and you can type particles system and just turn this off and going up press this all and you can find this fires just drag and drop in your scene you can increase the scale and the fire will come up here okay now we are going to render it out so go to the sequencer and what are the render settings i'll tell you so first thing first if you just click here you can find this unsafe configurations so firstly delete the jpeg click here anti-aliasing should turn on if you don't want any motion blurs simply use this spectacle sound count and make sure override anti-aliasing should turn on now engine warm-up should 32 if you want you can use it 64 as well now going down you can find this called game overrides turn this on use exr and for the safe side use png as well and last but not the least my most favorite high resolution should check on going output properties select your output resolution make sure we are going to use the 60 fps so change it to 60 fps press accept and once you feel happy simply press render local so yes guys that's it for today i hope you really understand how you can create some kind of a cinematic shots inside of unreal engine 5.5.4 if you feel this video helpful make sure subscribe comment down below what's your thoughts in the video see you next time in this channel till then keep watching keep rocking world of vfx